live. We are live. I believe we are live online. Helena, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yes. To me, it still says waiting, but does it show that we're live over there on your side? Okay, I think we're live. I think we're good. Okay. I can start to see a replay of it. Ah, oh, I'm going to move this here. How are you doing at home? We've got a very special guest today. I'm going to move this here so I can see your comments and I can see the guest as well. Perfect. I have the beautiful, very intelligent and one of the best coaches I know, Helena Hart on here. We're talking today three powerful dichotomies, combinations, whatever you want to call it, that has a man falling and staying in love. Helena, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming online. You're welcome. This is so much fun. We just I know, to right? do this like oh. late last night and I'm like, I'm in. I love talking with you. Always love getting your insights and this is like some new material that we've been working on. So we're super excited to share it with all of you. Yeah, guys. this is going to be cool. So I've got your comments on the right of my screen here. So it's just going to scroll down. We've got June's on from Melbourne. Laura's from the West Coast, Helena's territory. We've got Kavita's online. Uh, Kimberly says aloha from Kawai? K-A-U-A-I. I don't know where that is. How cool. Kira says, hi, you two. Jess is online. Esther's online. Marilyn's online. Cindy says, Cindy says, can't wait to see you. Kathy says, very much enjoy your videos from Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, this is cool. Hello from Texas. Guess who's visiting Texas soon? I'm very excited. Marilyn's on the East Coast. AJ's from Tennessee. We've got someone from Sydney. Kimberly's. Oh, an island in Hawaii. That actually makes a lot of sense. Wisconsin, Virginia, Tibet. No way. This is really cool. Lydia's, Lydia is here. Fantastic. Thank you for coming online. Anaheim, California. We've got some good stuff. I wanted to, before we dive into the live stream with Helena, I wanted to thank everyone who gave me feedback on the poll. 1,100 responses in that community section, which I super, super appreciated. And two-thirds of you said, hey, we want more classic videos from you, Mark. Uh, so you ask, I deliver. We're going to ramp up the classic videos for you. Dial back on the other ones a little bit and get some Ask Marks back in there just like you've been wanting. We're going to have something interesting for you in the next Ask Mark that is going to shock you. So just keep an eye out for the next episode of Ask Mark. It's probably a couple of weeks away. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be good. I'll just say that. Helena, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm actually really loving being on the other side of this, where I, was, I just feel I was really gonna say, to be. This is amazing. I was going to so say, excited. I feel like there's a lot more pressure now because I'm reading the comments. I'm talking to you. And I'm like, this is what Helena does with everyone. This is <laughs> this is full on. Uh, Kimberly says, Kauai is a small island, 70,000 people. We've got Mississippi. Bobby's from Niagara Falls. Hi from Adelaide. More local from me, says Deborah. Morocco, that's cool. Kim says, I like your accent. Indiana. Helena, today we're talking about, we had a few ideas what we wanted to talk about today. And then we, we came across this one, which was the, the dichotomies. Because we really said, well, we want to clear stuff up. You know, there's conflicting advice from different corners. And there's some like, do this, don't do this too much. Do lots of this, you know, be masculine. I'll be, well, be like this type of masculine or be feminine or um, have boundaries, but be softness, be compliant. We found these dichotomies in dating and relationship advice. And so today we want to clear up for you three of these dichotomies combinations. And we're going to show you how they fit together. Because there's a lot of problems with, with people come to me, they say confused. One coach said this, another said this. So I thought we'd get two coaches with two different viewpoints to show you how the viewpoints can merge together and have a man absolutely smitten and falling in love. That's today's live stream. Sound pretty good? Post your questions in the comments below because, well, in the comments on the right as well because we're going to have heaps and heaps of chats. We're going to do a Q&A and I'm going to slam Helena with all your questions and we're going to hear from her. I'm really, really excited for this. Helena, combinations. Do you want to kick us off with this real dichotomy combination that you're an absolute genius at talking about? I won't even say what it is. Do you want to kick it off? With the first one, you want me to kick off the first one? Yeah, I reckon let's do the first one straight Absolutely. from you. What's this dichotomy yeah. that's confusing people? Well, first of all, I love what you said about there's so much conflicting advice out there. That's like one of the number one questions I get over on my YouTube channel in the comment sections of some of my videos. Is like, I'm so confused. You know, this coach said to do this and, you know, and so 
we found, Mark and I have been talking a lot lately, kind of developing and working on some new material for you guys, that it's not just this either or one or the other thing. Often you have to embody both sides. You have to embody these two different polarities or dichotomies um, in order to make all of this come together. So the first one we're going to be talking about is space and softness. I actually don't know. Is that the first one you wanted to talk about? Yeah, <laughs> I love that one. I think let's kick it off with that because this one, you described this to me in a way that I'd never heard it put this way before and I thought it was just brilliant. So kick it away. What's, what's space and softness and explain how they seem opposite and yet what it's really about is bringing them together. Yeah, and I love that I had something to share that you'd never heard of before. So <laughs> that made me really happy. Um, yeah, space and softness is kind of this concept I came up with. Um, you know, for those of you who are kind of familiar with my videos and, and or if you have some of my programs or books or something like that, I'm all about feminine energy, or that's, you know, like one of the hallmarks of my work. And so feminine energy a lot of times just looks like, you know, leaning back and stopping doing all of the things that push men away without even realizing it, right? Those things that look like leaning forward physically, emotionally, verbally, even mentally by constantly being up in your head, just thinking about a man 24 seven, even when he's not right in front of you, right? So a lot of times just like 90% of what a woman needs to do is just stop leaning forward and pushing her energy out towards the man, especially if that man is at a place where he's maybe acting a little distant or pulling away, the best thing you can do is anchor yourself right where you are, drop down into your feminine energy, meaning connect to yourself, your own feelings and emotions, and just like lean back, you know, lean back in every sense of the word. And it's really important, that's the space side of this. It's so important, a lot of times that's really all a woman needs to do. But when it comes to really making a guy fall in love and creating this deep heart-to-heart -heart connection, leaning back, creating space is fantastic, but it's not enough in and of itself. You also need the softness. It's another aspect of your feminine energy. And that looks like you know being open and receptive and warm and open when a man does show up. So. It's kind of the overview of space and softness. I really found that it's it's kind of the opposite of what we all feel compelled to do sometimes, especially if we're like feeling triggered or really attracted to a guy. We tend to want to lean forward and make something happen and strategize and get some kind of result from him. And we shut ourselves down emotionally. So we're cut off from our feminine energy. We're cut off from our intuition. And we're just pushing the guy away without even realizing it. So space and softness is the opposite of that. It's leaning back, keeping your heart and energy open to a man. And you can actually do both of those at the same time in every, every interaction with him. It's kind of an overview. I hope I explained that in a way that, that makes sense. I, I love this, Haina. And so can you talk a bit more? Can you sort of say, okay, because the first time I heard this, I thought, oh, they're, they're not so much dichotomies. And then the way you explained it, what I'd love for you to kind of explain is, can you say, well, if someone's only space, what's the, what's the kind of unhelpful result that comes for it, from it? Versus if someone's only softness, what's the other unhelpful result? Like how does someone know if they're going, oh, I'm going into too much softness and there's not enough space here. I'm going into too much space. There's not enough softness. Can you kind of explain what, what wrong looks like with this? Yeah, great question. That's a phenomenal question. I've actually found that women tend to need, in general, help in like one area. So some women are great at creating space. They're great at leaning back. But then when a guy shows up, they're kind of shut off emotionally. Like they're kind of cut off from their own emotions and feelings and they're just up in their head. And yes, you can create attraction that way, but there's no like connection. There's no deep heart to heart connection happening if you're only in the space and you have no softness going on. Right. So that's one way it could just be like, uh, you know, if you get these this bad advice out there like, oh, just play hard to get and ignore a guy. And right. right. So the extreme so, is yeah. kind of the ice queen. The extreme yes. of space is I can attract lots of men. I can get the avoidant guys all frothing for me. Uh, but there's no I'm, I'm the ice queen. There's no softness there. There's kind of like you're going to come after me. You're going to get me. There's no vulnerability, softness around it. It's just the the avoidant men lap it up but you're not actually creating connection and love there. 
Absolutely. That's when you can see a guy coming on strong and trying really hard at the beginning, especially if you are in that kind of like ice queen stage and you don't have that warmth and, and softness and receptivity. You might attract men who are just in it for the conquest. And if anyone's ever been there, you know that once he kind of has you, maybe once he sleeps with you or once he kind of knows that he's got you, a man like that will tend to back off and maybe move on to the next conquest, as terrible as that sounds. So yeah, that's that would be an example of someone who has too much, you know, too much space, not enough softness. Yeah, because that if the thing with the ice queens is they can tend to attract that guy who always wants to chase, who always wants to chase, either wants to conquest or just has a very avoidant pattern because he doesn't want to be exposed vulnerably himself. So as long as you're leaning away, he comes forward. But if your thing is to create a balanced relationship, the moment you lean back to him, what happens? Well, because that he has to maintain a certain level of distance. Totally. So while you're running away, that's safe for him. But as soon as you lean back in, and this is where you get these weird situations where women say, oh, men just want to chase. Men should always, 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 always chase. And the guy chased for a while, but then you say, oh, I want to tell him that I miss him. But now it feels weird because as soon as you say it, it hasn't been the dynamic and I miss you and he starts to lean away. So Absolutely. if there's too much space, you become kind of, extreme version would be the ice queen but essentially you can not create that connection so what about softness Helena? if someone has too much softness if a woman has too much softness not enough space what does the opposite look like yeah uh, by the way i love what you i love how you explain everything oh my gosh like isn't it mark oh, so smart oh, you guys, yeah, like, kind to me. i read best, some of these comments soon the best way yeah we all have a, a certain amount of intimacy and closeness we can tolerate i call this like the energy exchange or the intimacy dynamic yeah so if you are if you can only tolerate this much closeness you're going to attract men with that but then when you start to fall for him as a woman right maybe after you sleep with him or start to develop feelings you're going to want to close that gap and that kind of guy is just going to be pushed further away so the softness is very important to attract the kind of man i always say that you want to attract uh you want to attract men when you are being warm and open and receptive you don't want to like go for the men who are only attracted to you when you're ignoring them or not treating them well, right? So the softness, too much softness to answer your question, um, looks like just being so open and free flowing and having absolutely no boundaries at all, letting a guy just kind of walk all over you or pushing out, constantly leaning forward and pushing your energy out towards him, right? You know, it could look like always being the like one to initiate giving contact, and stuff like that. absolutely over giving, over functioning, um, being so like, you know, nurturing and, and, and it, again, it comes from a good place. Both of these can, can come from a good place, but uh, you know, the way to actually protect yourself most seriously is to have your heart and energy open while creating that space, having healthy boundaries at the same time. Because like I mentioned, I think your intuition kicks in. When you're connected to your heart and your own feelings, you can really like feel into the situation and go like, is this a, a good situation for me or does something here not feel good? And I need to take a step back, but you wanna stay open in that process. And, and that's what softness is all about. Nice, nice. I like that. So we're getting a few comments. I'll read some of the comments. So people are saying it, it seems a bit hard to balance the two. And again, Dahlia says how to balance. Uh, Moenda says, oh, I'm, I'm not like I'm feeling, uh, I don't know what to do. Um, how do we, you know, obviously there's, these are two dichotomies. And what would you say to, to someone watching right now, a woman watching right now? What's the best, I guess, is there a practical exercise she can do to practice this? Because I think, I think what Helena, and correct me if I'm wrong, Helena, you're really saying you want to lean back while at the same time being vulnerable and open. So is there a way to, to practice this or how do you know when you're kind of getting the balance right? Yes. Great question. Thank you for your questions, you guys. It's awesome. We love getting that immediate feedback. Yeah, this is, can be confusing, but once you try it and start to get incredible results, like right away, it'll start to become like second nature. Like I said, at first it feels a little unnatural because it might be a little like counterintuitive to what we'd normally tend to do. Um, think of yourself as constantly responding to a man right? You're responding. So in a warm, open way. So rather than initiating everything and being the one to move things forward constantly, just 
for the, for the time being, of course it's fine to initiate sometimes, but for now, just try leaning back. You're just leaning back and then a guy shows up and you respond to him. You're just constantly responding. He, you te he texts you, you text him back, right? He asks you out, you say yes to that or no to that. You're just responding, 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 rather than being up in your head trying to strategize and figure a guy out constantly. That's one example. If you guys have personal situations, you could let us know and I could maybe like- Yeah, share them. Something. Share them if you have questions, and I think uh, we can we can get into those. But yeah, I love that answer, Helena. I love that. And it's really the the way I picture this, and the way I kind of coach clients is that we tend to think of leaning back as as decreasing vulnerability, as in like if I lean back, I have kind of more of the power. And a lot of people who come to me, men used to it, and women as well, a lot of the the wanting to be chased is coming from a place of, well, I'm less vulnerable if I do that. And if you think of wanting to be chased as making you more vulnerable, that's the way I kind of picture it in my head is like, let's say in a situation where it's flipped and I'm in a feminine state, she's whatever pushing forward to me. So she's like, she's showing some interest in me. I'd have to have my heart open to receive that while she's leaning in. So she, you know, I'm dating someone. Most of the time I'm in the more masculine state. But let's say one day she says, hey, I really like miss you. I hope you're having the best day. So she just sends me that text. So she's leaned in. I lean, like I've been the receiver. So I accept that. I've leant back and then I've said, really missing you too. Looking forward to seeing you. And, and I've been vulnerable. Like my response has been, I'm really missing you too. So I've been vulnerable, even though in that situation, I was the one leaning back. So most of the time for you as a woman, you're going to be the one leaning back and you can respond as Helena says. So he goes forward. I really like you. You know, I'm really missing you too. And there's this energetic, this vulnerable energetic exchange that happens while you're in your feminine. I love it. Yeah. It's kind of like matching, yeah, matching his energy. If a guy sends you a, you know, one sentence text message, don't respond with paragraphs and paragraphs, right? Yeah, kind of match his energy level and be open and receptive at the same time. Now this doesn't mean common misconception is, well, I'm supposed to just be perky and happy all the time, even if I'm upset about something. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That would actually be disconnecting from your heart. You want to be authentic when you express yourself and um, if anyone has questions about how to do that, we can go into that too. Totally. We can, we can go into that. Let's see. Uh, Hallie from Northern Carolina. Listen to you all the time, says Louise. I love Helena. Helena is great. Uh, does this apply to relationships too, says Tina, or just the early stages of dating? Helena. All throughout the course of your entire relationship. Yeah. Really any interaction you have with a man, for the most part, you can ask yourself, where's the space? Where's the softness? Am I am I connected to myself, and or am I you know trying to make something happen constantly? Yeah, love it. Uh, basically, leaning back is knowing your own self worth. If a guy's not messaging you back or ignoring you, lean back means lean back means don't overthink, don't message him constantly. Yeah, it's that real. It's that responsive nature. If a guy's investing in you, you're investing back. You're not trying to be an ice queen. You're saying he's saying I want to see you. You're saying hey, I want to see you too. And this is how we're diving into relationships are about matching each other's level of vulnerability, right? But if he's not giving you anything and he's, he's going away, you're going to go, well, I respect myself. So I'm going to respond to that. You know, there's a, there's a constant, there's a constant kind of subtle and really beautiful balance that occurs where you're just responding to each other. And when one of those responses gets out of whack, so as Helena says, if he sends you one text and your paragraphs and calling him or whatever, you can see that's out of whack. If he's given you heaps and you're going into ice queen mode, again, out of whack. So you see how this balance kind of forms with vulnerable responsiveness. I love how you said that. Yeah, it creates intimacy. It's great. And yeah. of course, you know, this doesn't mean that you can never reach out to a guy first. Um, the great thing about, oh, about this no. work, right, is, is that if you're feeling really confident, if you know a man is crazy about you, you can do anything, right? Most women, I'll say, who come to me are not at that place. They're at a place where they're feeling anxious, they're feeling insecure or coming from a place of lack because you know a man is pulling away a little bit and that's what it kind of stirs something up in us as women and causes us to want to lean forward and shut ourselves down emotionally because we think that that's going to protect ourselves but with space and softness i believe it's truly the best way to protect yourself like i mentioned before i i love that and i love that and and the best thing about you know entering that softness is if rejection does happen because because that's the fear 
is we don't want to go into vulnerability because, well, what if we get rejected for it? But the nice thing is if you get rejected and if he's not keen for it, you know that you really put your heart out there and you, you, you never have any doubts. You never have any doubts. You just walk away going, you know what? I put myself out there. And if he wasn't able to match that, if he wasn't in emotional space to match that, I have no doubts. You know, it's, I put myself out there. There'll be another man that will match that. Absolutely. I think I saw a video of you once, maybe a long time ago, where you said something like being open to put yourself out there is like the truest sign of confidence, which is super attractive, yeah. right? Yeah, putting, putting your neck on the line. It, it really is, isn't it? It's the true sign of confidence because you know that, well, if you if you hurt me or betray me, you know what, I'll recover. But I, I'm it's sort of saying I'm willing to go here. Are you willing to come with me? If the person comes with you, you create a beautiful relationship. If not, yeah, it stings a little bit at the time, but then you know you can heal yourself and then do it again with the next person who wants to nurture. Yeah, for closing that door, like you know, if you really like open and put yourself out there and a guy is not, you know, receptive to that, closing that door and moving on, it's like you're creating space for an even better guy for you guy to come in. Better. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that, Helena. Let's talk the second one, the second dichotomy, which often gets um, often gets separated, and really you do bring the two together. It's safety and excitement. Safety and excitement. Do you want to talk a little bit? And I know you're you're really big on creating safety and creating that side of things. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, about that? Sure. Yeah. You know, so a lot of times, and, and this, this is the, the kind of women who are kind of drawn to my work. They, a lot, something I always say is that you're kind of already providing the excitement and the thrills on some level, just by being a woman and being in your feminine energy. It's like kind of mysterious and intriguing to a guy just on your own. Most women that come to me and need help in their relationship or in, just in their dating life need help with the safety part. So in order for a man to want to like come close to you and fall in love and, you know, be with you, commit to you for a real relationship, he has to feel safe, right? And the first thing I always say about this is you have to feel safe within yourself before a man is ever going to feel safe, feel with, safe you, with you, right? Yeah, yeah. and that, that looks like feeling safe with your own feelings, right? Uh, loving, embracing, and accepting all the parts of yourself, even the parts that don't feel so good that we want to like hide from others and not show to the world. I mean, I, we've all we all experienced that, right? But when 100%. a man sees, yeah, when a man sees, oh, she accepts herself, she loves herself, she's not constantly beating herself up. That's how he knows that you know it's safe for him to open up a little bit and, and share more vulnerable parts of himself that he doesn't want to always show to others and this is happening on a usually on a kind of subconscious level usually men can't put their finger yeah. on it or articulate that's right mm -hmm. that's really yeah important to yeah but it's just this feeling like oh i feel safe with her i want to come closer i want to go deeper into some of these deeper levels of intimacy with her yeah and i love that you pointed out it, it starts with you uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys an interesting story. I was on a client call literally just before I came on with Helena. So this is the first time client who's come to me and she's had this pattern of dating avoidant men. So dating men who keep a distance, men who are a space away and basically the relationships have been terrible. Uh, very not good things happening in these relationships. And so she came to me and she said, one thing I've noticed, Mark, I'm trying to break away from this guy I'm currently with, who's, you know, even in her words, emotionally unavailable. She's like, I'm trying to break away from him. Uh, but one thing I find is that I have all these men hitting on me, like heaps of men, 20, 30, 40, heaps. And I'm not attracted to any of them. And now when I hear that, or when I heard that, I was just a little bit suspicious because I was like, is she not attracted to any or is she, is she, you know, just, just having standards? And I asked her, I'm like, are you, are you really not attracted to any? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm so picky. I'm so fussy. I was like, all right, I think my intuition's on point here. And we explored this a bit. And she said something interesting. She said, do you know, it's funny when it's just a guy I want for a one night stand. Uh, it's fine. I'm attracted to him. I know I'll never see him again. So we have sex. It's great. And then that's that. But as soon as... I think a guys are possible for a dating or relationship. My attraction, whoosh, it gets blocked. And what we know about the brain is that no matter what action you think you should take from your high brain, if your lower brain 
under the limbic system thinks that action is unsafe, think of it like a security guard standing at that gate who will not let it through. So she says, hmm, I should date more emotionally available men, but the impulse never gets past the bottom of her brain. It never happens. She, she can't action on it because it's not declared as safe. And so what was happening is every time she had a one night stand, it was fine. There was no emotional intimacy there. So she was safe and she could do that and action on it and feel attraction. But as soon as it came to an emotional connection, error message at the bottom of the brain because it didn't feel safe. This is huge because what was actually happening is she wasn't aware of this until the call. She just thought that she was just not attracted to 20, 30, 40 men. But we realized that if I sat her down in a chair and if I put like 20, 30, 40 men in front of her and if she actually got into her safety, if she got into herself, if she got into uh, a really good place, that attraction would come out. But the security guard at level four of her brain had found this sneaky trick, which was judging men on a very superficial level such that she could avoid the fear of deep intimacy. It's, it's, I found this so interesting. And because of these superficial judgments, she was attracting men who had the same superficial fears and thus the pattern of avoidant relationships. Oh, yeah. So she, wow. Yeah. 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 So oh, she I wants to attract a safe guy. Yeah, I gotta go here. But yeah, if she wants to attract a safe guy, she first has to find that safety within herself because only by accepting her own imperfections is she going to stop blocking men's imperfections. And then that could, by accepting her own imperfection and being with a man who's imperfect, that's going to shine a light on her own. And so when she truly establishes that safety within herself, she's going to find that safety within a man. Oh my gosh. I I'm like hanging on your every word over here because I, yeah, I'm very familiar. That used to be my pattern. Absolutely. But maybe about 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And it's safety is the chemistry is off the charts with those kind of unavailable men. If you're unavailable, if there's a part of yourself that's deeply unavailable or, or uh, afraid of real intimacy or commitment like I was. So, so that's where we both felt safe. But anytime a guy like that, anytime you kind of fall for him and get even a hint of expectation about a potential relationship, for example, he'll often run or vice versa. You know, I heard, I heard this great quote once, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, but something like um, when we're faced with something that feels familiar versus what we truly desire, we'll typically choose what feels familiar to us every time, right? So we can say consciously that we want this deep, intimate relationship but if deep down we're scared of real intimacy or, or closeness, for example, you know, a guy shows up and he's like willing to give us everything we say we want. We're not attracted to those guys and vice versa, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, if you grow up in volcanoes, the humans, humans are incredibly adaptable. And if you grow up in volcanoes, uh, you're going to, that's what you'll adapt to. That's your safety zone. You're like, I love living in volcanoes. I grew up there. No one else wants to go to a volcano, but you're happy as Larry there because you grew up in them. So as human beings, we're incredibly adaptable, but whatever becomes safe becomes our pattern. And, and until you readjust what's safe, and this is pretty much our job as coaches to help our clients do this, the, the, the lower, uh, the name escapes me, thalamus, will block every signal you send that feels unsafe. It, you won't action on it. You have a nice idea and you can contemplate it like smoking's unsafe, but when you actually go to quit smoking, most of the time the signal, signal doesn't get through. And it's the same. If this feels unsafe, the signal, it's a nice idea, but it doesn't get past the safety guard at the bottom of the brainstem. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So true. And then at the same time, it's like your subconscious mind is, is pulling you towards what feels familiar constantly, kind of like you said. And so it's yeah. creating this spark of attraction with the kind of men that feel familiar to that, that feel like what love maybe used to feel like earlier in life has to do with our parents and caretakers. And there's so much that goes into this. Maybe it's a topic for another video, but yeah, it's, uh, it's constantly pulling you towards what feels familiar. And our subconscious mind doesn't make decisions about like this 
is good situation, this is healthy, or this is unhealthy, this is good for you, or this is bad. Your yeah. uh, pre prefrontal cortex is what makes those kinds of decisions. But your subconscious doesn't do that. Your subconscious nope. just goes, you survived this, you can handle this, this is known, and it pulls you like, you know, like that unavailable man, just pulls you back into this situation where you're never really gonna get what you, you say you truly want, right? So how do we balance safety and excitement? Helena, how do you put those two together? Because safety, safety, as you said, comes from the woman and then the man feels that. What happens with too much safety and how do you balance excitement in there? Yeah, great question. I know you have some amazing ideas about excitement too, right? One way to, uh, you know, create, okay, one way to become more safe with a little more intimacy and closeness, which is what we're talking about, is opening yourself up in baby steps, right? Um, in low risk situations, an example could be expressing how you feel about something. Say, I had a really tough day today. I'm, I'm feeling really sad or bummed out over something that happened. And then watching what a guy does and seeing how if he's the right guy for you, just loves you and accepts you, you know, isn't doesn't judge you. That's how you build this intimacy over time. And actually you can change this. I have, if I could do it, anybody can. You can change the type of man you are attracting and attracted to by develop you know, real chemistry, developing real intimacy, not this instant chemistry that's all hooked up with the wrong kind of man, right? Real chemistry, real lasting attraction. One way to do it, opening yourself up, watching how he accepts you, doesn't want to change anything about you, and then you start to get more comfortable. Um, doing it really, really uh, low risk situations, talking about how you feel about the weather outside, not about how you feel about him and the relationship and all this deep stuff, right? But just something small and just trying it. It's, it's oh, harder sure. than you think at first. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. And so is it possible to have too much safety in, in to, and versus excitement? Well, if you're just stuck, uh, you know, if you're just stuck in what feels safe, that can keep you that can keep you stuck on like the unavailable man or men with anger issues or addiction issues, whatever your pattern is. And yeah, so if you never go, if, if, you, if you, what is, there's this quote, like everything you want is outside of your comfort zone, right? <laughs> so you have to take, if you want to turn this around, if, if you want, if you want to just kind of be with the unavailable guy forever. And I mean, nothing wrong with that. But if what you want is to start attracting men who, and being attracted to men who could really give you everything you're looking for, right? You have to you have to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. And and the way I like to work with clients and you know some of my tools, yeah, baby steps exactly. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? I'd love to hear what you have to say around stepping out of the safety yeah zone. yeah or balancing it with the excitement. Yeah, so I think one of the big things is when you really when you find that safety within yourself and you start attracting men who accept the imperfections and feel safer with you. It's, it's beautiful, it's brilliant, it's vulnerable. As humans, our dichotomy of being human is that the first thing we do is we want safety and intimacy with our mothers, and then as soon as we're physically capable, we wanna crawl away. There is always a swing between the need for individuality and the need for connection. And we go through this our whole lives. The, the most classic debate is polygamy versus monogamy, right? One system caters to one, one system caters to the other, no system's perfect. So we're in this constant ebb and flow between these two. And this is why sometimes, you know, when you have really deep, intimate sex, it's just super, super passionate, after orgasm and after a little while, after it's all calmed down, you're kind of like, okay, just get off me for a bit. You're like, yeah, you, you've merged, but then I need to reestablish self. Right, we, we see these dichotomies between connection and individuality, it's, it's, it's constant, it's like the human condition. And so when it comes to safety, when you go deep, deep into that, eventually too much of anything will become too much, right? So I never, I'm not saying delay safety, nothing like that. But the way you can balance it with excitement is simply by the man feeling that you have other parts to you that you will continue to respect and prioritize. So in a practical sense, if this is me and, and I'm with you as a woman, I'm feeling very safe. You're accepting of my flaws. We've, got, we've gone deep emotionally. I can feel I can be so vulnerable with you. And there'll be a natural excitement that comes from the space when even though I'm feeling all of that, I still know that say on Thursday night, I don't get to see you because you're hanging out with your friends. Like that's you time. 
or on Saturday you're off to pole dancing or water polo or whatever it is that you do. There's this like safety and deep connection I have with you. And then not because you're trying to be unsafe or anything weird like that, but because you have these other I identities and sense of self that you wrap around, there is a, a still a distance for me to cross. I don't feel fully merged and thus claustrophobic by you. I feel super safe and intimate with you with enough distance to like crawl away from my mother and then crawl back. It's the same dichotomy. It's exactly the same. So by having this solid sense of self and these other priorities around him and these things that you do, things that you're passionate about, I feel a safe enough distance that I can kind of like, literally like a child with their mother, I can like run to the end of the store and be like, okay, I've established self enough. I want to run back. That's basically how that balance looks. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You don't want all, you don't always want this. That would be like too much. I mean, into me, it's interesting. Right? Yeah, right? right? Yeah. We on a deep level, we're afraid we're going to merge too much with the other person. And at the same time, we kind of want to merge with the other person. Men and women both have these same fears going on as well. I mean, the classic thing is that, you know, women crave connection and men crave Crave independence. Um, one thing that came to mind when you were talking is that um, you know a lot of women come to me and they go, things were really great for like the first three months or maybe even the first six months, and now things have gotten a little stagnant. Stagnant, and I always say, you know, what's different? What shifted in the dynamic? And what almost always comes up is that when they first met, the woman had this full life outside of the relationship. Yeah, and that's exciting to a guy. It's exciting. A man does not want to be the center of your universe a hundred percent of the time that feels like pressure to him at least uh, a whole healthy man right that he, he wants you to have your own life and, and he wants to be able to like fit into that but it's exciting and, and kind of mysterious for a man when it's like you have this this big amazing life going on and, and you also want him to be a part of it it doesn't just become like the two of you like watching netflix every single night um which i know it can be so easy to slip into that but you know keeping just a very practical thing here just keeping yeah. some of those things that you had at the beginning is really important for the excitement it's, right this is huge because i've i've been with both types of women I, i've been with one who you could just feel all her priorities were kind of going aside and i would start to feel claustrophobic and even a guy who's secure is going to start to lean back a little bit when he's claustrophobed and you start playing out an anxious avoidant pattern and then the relationship right falls over. Whereas I've also been with someone who I could be safe, vulnerable with her, but I never felt like I, I, she lost herself. I never felt like she had disappeared. The, the stuff that was attractive at the start was still there. I still felt this space where I can move to and fro and, and feel very safe. Just like literally, I use the analogy, but like a child with a mother, like they can walk away and be like, okay, I want to go back now. And just that, that safety in individuality. I love it. Amazing. I, I love everything you have to say. There's so, oh, <laughs> each yeah, one yeah, you yeah, be. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. So good. I love it. Is there anything else? That we, do you want to move on to the third one? Let's, or let's I don't, the third one. Okay. Let's talk the, the big one that's seen as the total opposites. But really, they go together, masculine and feminine. How do they merge, Helena, and why do they need to be used together? Oh, gosh. <laughs> How much time do you have? I have so much to say on this. We might have to do some more <laughs> live streams on this over on my channel or something. But yeah, a another misconception, a lot of people see my videos on feminine energy, and they think, oh, so you're never supposed to be in your masculine. You're supposed to, supposed to squash it down. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. My work is all about ramping up both sides, right? Your masculine and your feminine, becoming more expansive, not squashing one or the other down. So it's not about balancing them, in my opinion, at least. It's more about combining them and just nice. using them in a way that's going to work for you in your life rather than against you. So that's kind of an overview on, on what this looks like. What, what do you think about this? Uh, yeah, I use, uh, I use an interesting metaphor to kind of explain this. Because when I ask women, I, I'll often ask them, well, when do you feel most feminine? And I'll get different answers. I might get singing in the shower or dancing or different things like this. But one answer I get a lot is sex. I feel the most feminine when I'm, when I'm having sex. I go, okay. So what are some other, in, t in terms of why is sex so enjoyable, what are some of the things you feel from the guy? And she says, oh, you know, I feel protected. I feel safe. Uh, I feel very present. 
And so she's feeling all these things and she's in her feminine. And there's this misconception that the guy is responsible for that. Now, the guy is present there, obviously, and he's making you feel safe, vulnerable, protected, sorry, present, safe, secure, etc. But the guy isn't in your dopamine, right? He's not actually in control of your physiology. But what he's doing, what his presence is doing is your reflective masculine, like he's here, your reflective, reflective masculine is lighting up. And then with that safety, security presence, your natural feminine is able to explode, right? And go into like super duper overdrive. So a misconception that I find is a very helpful way to be explained is that women say, I feel very feminine during sex and you do. But the reason you can feel so feminine is because you're also feeling so healthily masculine at the same time. You're lighting up both areas and because you naturally lean feminine, that one is like fireworks, right? But it's the guy who is almost like plugging in the masculine at a supercharged level. And then with that masculine plugged in, you're like, okay, oh, I'm secure, I'm present. I'm saying, oh, now my feminine is shooting through the roof, right? But if you don't feel safe and secure and present, not only are you not going to be having good sex, you're not going to be having any sex, right? If a woman doesn't feel safe, she's not going to have secure. She's, she can, she's never going to have sex, right? So you don't have sex until your masculine gets pumped up. And what that allows is your feminine to go into overdrive. And so really remembering that this is within you, you have both of these and this dichotomy of, oh, I have to only feel feminine and push down masculine actually, as Helena says, has the opposite effect. Oh my gosh. Yes. Amazing. So brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's the job of your own masculine energy to do all kinds of things. One would be like create this safe space for your feminine energy to really just be there and breathe and, and feel everything that's going on around you and, and intuit what's going on in the situation. Um, another example is setting boundaries, right? Setting really clear, firm boundaries. And then, you know, your feminine energy is leaning back and not settling until somebody comes in and not trying to close that gap, right? Just because you have strong feelings for a man, so you break your own boundaries. So your masculine energy, it's, it's I heard a great analogy. Uh, my friend on your grace has this great analogy. The masculine energy is like this container, like the ocean floor that allows the ocean being your feminine energy to kind of like storm and do its thing. And it doesn't, right? So you need both. Yeah. You need both. I and another that. thing, I, yeah, I always say that um, you attract a mirror image of your own masculine energy as a woman. So if your own masculine energy is not taking care of yourself, if it's really critical of yourself, for example, you, you're going to attract men who reflect that back to you and who just make you feel like you're not quite good enough. Uh, if, so much that goes into this. If you attract men who keep you waiting, you can always take a look. Where am I waiting in other areas of my life? Where am I one foot in and one foot out of everything? And then on a subtle level, like looking to a man to provide something that you kind of need to provide for yourself first. I have all different kinds of examples, but I hope I'm explaining that clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it brings back the example of the client I spoke with just before where she's going, well, I'm attracting all these avoidant men who obviously have their own wounded energies. And what we saw is that her lack of safety was, that was all reflected in her own wounded energy. And as soon as she heals that energy, she attracts men with the healed energies as well, the safe energies as well. Oh yeah, I mean, once you make some shifts within yourself, it's almost immediate. You'll you because we often are attracting and attracted to partners that are kind of reflecting back to us the wounded parts of ourselves. Often, this is where I talk so much about like the wounded masculine and feminine the, versus the empowered masculine and feminine. If anyone's interested, we can probably talk. Soulmate I know you have a lot to mate. Yeah. Yeah, you have a lot to say on that as well. But as much as you can, you want to ramp up your empowered masculine that's the part of you that you know sets strong boundaries um it's like that safe container for your uh the empowered feminine is the part of you that's really feels confident enough to be seen and express your desires right you know communicate coming from that feminine place versus the wounded masculine and feminine just really quick and in case anyone's interested the wounded masculine from my perspective at least is can be can get into bullying controlling manipulating 
trying to push and shove your way to getting exactly, what you want. Yeah. Uh, you see a lot of this in Wall Street type environments, like young yeah. executive environments. You see a lot of wounded masculine running around. Yeah. And the wounded feminine is kind of like that damsel in distress energy, like lacking the motivation to take care of yourself, basically waiting around for a guy to kind of make a decision or, or uh, you know, make everything right to save you from your own life, right? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people equate feminine energy with this wounded feminine that you just yeah, don't if you, say to a guy, if you say to a guy hey like get into your feminine the guy will say oh i don't want to be weak or needy or insecure or oh, i don't want to be like all those like a doormat like it, it's got the stereotypes go to the, the wounded version of the energy not the empowered connected sensual empathic version of the energy exactly exactly yeah i love how you said that absolutely also constant fear and doubt and frustration can be signs of the wounded feminine a lot of men in their wounded feminine these days i found not wanting to make a decision have you found that as well yeah totally i know this is huge in the japanese culture huge i mean it's western culture as well but there's a as japanese have a saying for it and that what is it um uh, what is it it's something, it's, it's, uh, herbivore. I think it's herbivore men, I think is a saying. I don't know if that's right. If anyone, any Japanese followers online, correct me if I'm wrong, but that uh, Japanese women have this term herbivore men, and they're really frustrated by this culture of men who won't make a decision, men who won't do anything, men who won't ask a woman out, uh, they're, they're just men who are in this wounded feminine. And it's, the women are hating it. Oh yeah, I, I've done so many, so many live streams over on my channel about this. Like, m like men just kind of, that's when a guy's just kind of hanging around and he's maybe doing enough to kind of keep you there, but he's not stepping up and doing what he really should be doing to, to make you feel safe and secure in the relationship. Really common thing, especially these days. Let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the comments. Uh, uh, Erica says, that is so true. Cindy says, I can feel my feminine self when he's protecting me. Uh, Wait, where'd that comment go? I feel, Cindy, I feel my feminine self when he is protecting me. I feel my male standard when I stand up for him. Okay, that's interesting. Thoughts on that comment? Can you repeat that one again? I don't, I don't have them all. Cindy says, I feel my feminine self when he is protecting me. I feel my male standard when I stand up for him. Oh, I see. So it sounds like she's she feels her own masculine energy when she stays strong in her boundaries, and she feel that that's kind of how I'm interpreting that. I think that's uh, what how I interpreted mm -hmm. it. I'm slightly confused as well, actually. Yeah, uh, staying strong in your boundaries, sticking to your boundaries, and and not collapsing your boundaries just because you really like this one guy. Um, that's good. That's your own masculine energy. It's the job of your own masculine energy to not put yourself in a situation that if a man makes a decision, you're going to be completely devastated or blindsided, right? It's, it, it's the job of your masculine energy to protect you. And of course, disappointments happen sometimes in dating and relationships. But for the most part, yeah, that could look like not putting yourself in these situations where you know a guy doesn't want the same things as you do or isn't treating you well or he's interested in other women. It's just like, no, we don't. you don't have time for any of that, right? Get yourself totally. out of there. Your your own masculine needs to get yourself out of there. Don't put yourself there to begin with, right? Absolutely. Love it. Uh, Louise says, I have tons of comments, but we'll not blow up this chat, lol. Don't be shy, Louise. Nothing wrong with blowing up chat if the comments uh, add value. Uh, how to make him honest and open to you. Uh, how to make him honest and open to you and Helena share his plans without pressure. So, Helena, how to talk to a guy and have him... Uh, I guess, open up without kind of putting the, the smack down on him. You should tell me this, you should this. What's your advice on doing that? Oh, that's such a great question. Yeah, this is classic, right? Well, first of all, you want to see where you're coming from because if you're trying to make a guy open up, <laughs> get him to open up. I can just feel that energy. He's going to shut down more and more. I mean, Mark, you're a guy. What, do you agree? Open up. Just, just yell at me to open up. <laughs> Just, we'll, we'll role play this right now. Right? <laughs> like, open up. Why aren't you? Yeah, tell me about your plans. What's right? wrong yeah. with you, Mark? I can just feel you backing off. Yeah, even, even energetically, right? Trying to get a guy to do something that he's not just freely doing on his own is often not a, uh, not a good strategy. 
uh, something that might be helpful is, is as the woman, woman, you know, in your feminine energy, you have a lot more emotional flexibility and agency often than a man. So often you have to go first. You have to open up first in baby steps, like I said, and see what he does. See if he opens up a little more. Um, if he doesn't, you might get bored with him. I don't know where you're at in, in dating or if you're in a relationship, but yeah, try opening up a little bit first and seeing what his response is to that. Uh, Mark, I would love to hear your thoughts on that one. Yeah, I, I agree. P putting yourself out there, as you say, in baby steps, if your vulnerability is massively disproportionate, that doesn't make sense. But being brave enough to step up and say, hey, like, this is where I'm at. Where are you at? And you're not putting pressure on him. You're actually being raw and honest. Like, I'm really vibing this. And like, I'm curious to know where you're at. What's where? Yeah. How are you I doing? I love that. It's like coming from a place in the space. Yeah. Coming from a place of curiosity. Something I always tell my clients, uh, I have a lot of videos on this too. Great thing to ask yourself before you do or say anything is what am I hoping will happen here? Right? Everyone could just write that down. What am I hoping will happen? And if you can answer that really strongly, like, I'm opening up because I'm going to try and make him open up, <laughs> right? And you have like this, you know, this urgency. A man can feel that on a deep level and it makes him just want to shut down and create more space between the two of you. If you yeah. ask yourself, yeah, I'm going to open up here. I'm going to be a little more vulnerable and share myself. What am I hoping will happen? It's just like nothing. I want to express myself because this is who I am. I am a warm, open, feminine energy woman. Then you're great. Then you're great. Then see what he does. But but don't oh, don't do some of these things because you're trying to make something happen. That's you being in your masculine, sometimes like a wounded masculine trying to control the situation, not a dynamic you want to get into, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I remember a former partner of mine doing this beautifully. We've been dating, oh, I want to say four months or so. And she just came to me one day and she's like, look, I, I'm really vibing this. Like, where are you at? I'm, I, I'm curious to know, you know, I have been asked out by a couple of other guys. Uh, at the moment, I'm vibing this. So, I've, you know, I've told them no, but I want to know where you're at and see if, if you're on the same page. If not, that's all good. We, we go ahead. And, and what she's really communicating there, even beyond what Helena said, it's, it's a great point. She hasn't come with a specific this must happen outcome, but she's also come in and what she's effectively communicated is she said, my own masculine is going to hold me fine if you don't. She's like, I'm going to be okay. I'm vulnerable enough. I'm saying that I want you. I'm saying that I'd love to have you in my life. But by not putting the pressure on me, she's also saying that my own man has got me if, if you don't. And so I'm now standing there. Instead of feeling the pressure, I'm like feeling the, the, the space that I can come forward and fill. And so instead of her being like, you should commit, you should commit, and, and me taking over that load, she said, look, I'm here in my space. I'm being vulnerable. Again, softness and, what do we say? Softness and space. Mm -hmm. She's been the softness. She's done the vulnerable. And she's also given me the space because her own masculine is there holding her. And now, oh, yeah, I really like you too. Okay, let's be exclusive. And that was how we became exclusive. So really Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Such a good example. Yeah. If you can release your attachment to the outcome or the results, like not feel so urgent about it, you know, you can really do anything. If you're just like she did, you know, coming from a place of total, just, I'm going to be fine either way. This is just where I'm at. You can do anything. You can say anything because a man's going to feel that he's feeling your energy and your vibe. And that's a lot more important than the specific words you use themselves. Of course, the words are important, but it's your energy that a guy's picking up on where sometimes he can just feel like, oh, she wants something from me that I might not be at a place to, to give right now, right? Yeah. And as you said, when your masculine is holding you, when you've connected to that and you've energized your healthy masculine, a guy's going to sense that. And the men with healthy masculines are going to respond. Whereas if you're in a needy space, if you're in a wounded masculine space, the guys who want someone who's going to be codependent are going to respond. And this is why when you lean back in that softness and your safety with your masculine and your feminine energized, you're going to get bombarded by great guys. Oh gosh, yeah, that is so true. Yeah, a lot of you know, a lot of guys are have codependent tendencies, and they're looking for someone on a deep level who is going to try and control them or manipulate them, and all different kinds of combinations here. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. There's all sorts of unhealthy combinations that you can attract, but it's by matching that these dichotomies up in yourself that you can attract someone who has those dichotomies matched up in themselves.
I love, I love it. it. Oh my God. I'll just say, yes. I'll just finish with a couple more questions. Uh, Deborah says, I love your shirt. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Uh, choo -choo 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 with some questions. Mm -mm. The call, whenever. Why? Uh, Courtney says, why are men afraid to say something because he doesn't want to disappoint you as a friend? Helena, any ideas? Why are men afraid to say something because he doesn't want to disappoint you as a friend? I mean, in general, men don't want to feel like they're disappointing a woman, right? Um, or uh, men can kind of tend to take everything you say as like a correction or a criticism sometimes, depending on where you're coming from. So, you know, he doesn't want to make you feel maybe that he made you feel disappointed. And so men will just hold themselves back sometimes. Yeah. Men, uh, this is a, it goes into boundaries a little bit. Men hate being the villain. Remember, men's purpose even evolutionary is to serve women and a lot of men therefore end up not wanting to be the villain in any way in a woman's life and and this isn't right but this is just a fact of the matter and knowing how to deal with it is what's important for you but you know if, if me and you are dating and suddenly I'm suddenly I'm starting to not vibe it. You know, I'm starting to find attraction for others, but I smush it down. I don't say anything. This continues for six months, a year more. I keep smushing it down. But eventually this topic doesn't get addressed. So why have I not wanted to bring it up? Well, the real reason is not only have I not wanted to be the villain, but I've actually had a complete boundary lapse in that I've started to take responsibility for your emotions. Because I don't want to be the villain, I say, oh, I don't really want to tell you that I'm not feeling as much attraction because you'll probably get mad. That'll probably hurt your feelings and I'll be the villain. I don't want to be the villain. And so this not wanting to be the villain means I end up in this weird boundary situation where I end up sort of trying to take care of your backyard, which isn't my responsibility. My responsibility is to be honest to you. It's not to take responsibility for your feelings. But because I want, don't want to be the villain, I end up crossing that fence and trying to take responsibility for your feelings. The only way to do that is by not saying anything. And so we kind of continue on in this silence. And then two years later, three years later, there's been chronic cheating because this issue got pushed under the rug. So this is a common one in, in men. This fear of being the villain, which is the central fear, drives a boundary lapse. And that boundary lapse leads to a lack of communication and a lot of silence and frustration. Oh gosh, like that is so true. There's all different kinds of examples here. You know, if it's, something's bothering him, it doesn't, like I said, men don't have the kind of emotional agency that we have. They don't, maybe just don't know how to say it. They're afraid of hurting you or something. And so, yeah, but that can cause a lot of damage in the relationship. Totally, totally. Hey, Helena, we've got to wrap up here, but do you want to tell the audience about your free gift? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you put it in the description, right? Right below this yep. video. That is my three keys to attract the man you want. It's a report uh, and an audio training. I know some people like to read, some people like rather listen. So there's both in there for you. And yeah, it's hopefully like this live stream. I can't wait to read the comments. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Give you some ways that you've hopefully never heard before. It's not just about, you know, what to, you know, what to wear and how to stand or it's, really diving deep into some of these subconscious processes. Like, do you tend to put men on a pedestal and then try to convince, you know, convince them to be with you on a subtle level or prove yourself to them or, or, you know, win them over in some way. That's, that's one example. Uh, really going into these deep, um, sometimes subconscious drives that we have that you might not even be aware of. So yeah, that's on my, uh, that's on my website, helenaheartcoaching.com. It's totally free. And yeah, I believe the link's in the description, right? I love that. The link is in the description. Make sure you're on Helena's mailing list and mine as well. I've got my free gifts underneath that. Uh, me and Helena are going to be cooking up something really, really special. So you have to be on the mailing list if you want to know and have first access to it. So make sure you've got at least one of our free gifts so you get that. Uh, and I am about to head off and, and jump on board to my own Empowerment Academy live stream where everyone gets to do a QA and a with me. So if you are interested in knowing more about that, make sure you check out the Empowerment Academy link. It's right underneath this video. And I'm going to be live for an hour and a half just answering one-on-one -on -one questions. So I'm going to have a bunch of fun over there. Helena, we're going to do this again soon. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. I love being on the other side of it. It's just like so relaxing. And I was, I, anytime you want, I'm awesome. I, I'd <laughs> I'm like down. to set up here because I can see the comments scrolling down the left and then I can see the, the you on the two thirds of the left, on the right of the screen, other side. 
yeah. So it's a good little setup from this direction. I quite like it. We've had some lovely comments. Thanks, Floor, Sandra, Adri, Roberta. We got Mazzy, Erica. I'm not going to get through everyone here. Beanie was online. Uh, Mazzy again. Karita, TOPV, Alyssa. So many of you. Kira was online. Kathy, Kim, Bru Brucey, Good Tort. Julie, so many of you. Kim was online. Thank you for coming online. Let me know if you'd like me to have Helena on again. Dare I know the answer and what questions you'd like me to ask her. Helena Hart, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Thank you for inviting me. This was amazing. And I, got, I was scrolling through the comments a little bit and I love your audience. Like would love to connect more with you guys. If you have questions for us, if you uh, request for more videos, we, we like making videos together. We're, we're learning. So <laughs> this was so much fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming online, guys. Post your comments below. I'd love to hear them. Hit the like button and I'll see you on the live stream. The next one is going to be in a month's time and in the Empowerment Academy if you're in there as well. We might even see if we can get Helena back in a little bit sooner. See you guys. Thanks for coming in. Bye, Helena. Bye. Bye, everybody.